सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल माई रिगार्ड्स एंड ग्रीटिंग्स टू एवरी वन हु इज़ वॉचिंग माई वीडियो एंड माई लेक्चर्स सो टूडे आई हैव ब्रॉट अ वेरी स्पेशल एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर यू ऑल एंड द टॉपिक इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज हर्निया and i'm not going to discuss a lot important a lot of things in the details of this so i would just summarize it because what i feel that laparoscopic hernia and its anatomy is very tough for all so today uh, i will be discussing what is triangle of doom what, what is triangle of pain and lot more important things about that so let us join this journey of hernia so let's talk about hernia so when you talk about hernia it's basically a protrusion of a viscous or a part of viscous via defect in a cavity this is what is very 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 simple thing but i would like to discuss the anatomy of you can say groin so the first thing is today we are going to discuss something about inguinal hernia or we would be discussing the groin hernia to understand that thing you have to understand the anatomy of groin and for that i have brought a very special you can say diagram for you that is parasagittal view of the groin and this parasagittal view of groin is very 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 important so whenever we talk about hernia the first thing that you have to understand is the anatomy now when we transit from abdominal wall to the groin you have to understand that there are three important muscle layers of the abdominal wall what are they from outermost you have external oblique then you have internal oblique then you have transverse abdominis so when this abdominal wall ends and the groin starts how these muscles transform into a canal let us try to understand so the first muscle that i will draw in front of you this is the external oblique so if you see a parasagittal view we have a view which is showing you the external oblique muscle the second muscle that you have is the internal oblique this is again very 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 important so this is the internal oblique so we have external oblique we have internal oblique the third muscle that we have is the transversus abdominis so this is the transversus abdominis muscle so you can see that there are three important muscles external oblique internal oblique and transversus abdominis now when the groin is ending at or when the abdominal wall is ending and the groin is starting what is the fate of these muscles try to understand the external oblique which is on the outermost side outermost side will slide down in form of a curtain to form the anterior wall of the inguinal canal so this is what is the anterior wall of inguinal canal and this is what is known as external oblique aponeurosis external oblique aponeurosis and now this is hanging like a curtain similarly this middle wall that is internal oblique this is going to form the roof of the canal so this is the middle one this is form the roof try to understand to some extent in the medial part the conjoint tendon is formed now what is this conjoint tendon it is nothing but the fusion of the internal oblique with the transversus abdominis so transversus abdominis is fusing with the internal oblique to form conjoint tendon so i would like to summarize it in a form that medial wall of the uh, you can say uh, the roof of the inguinal canal who is forming the roof of the inguinal canal it is the internal oblique and along with this internal oblique to some extent the conjoint tendon so medial part of this roof is formed by the conjoint tendon and what is the conjoint tendon it is nothing but the fusion fibers between the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis similarly as you go posteriorly the transversus abdominis will again hang like a roof uh, hang like a curtain and form the posterior wall so who is forming the posterior wall students it is formed to some extent by a muscle which is known as transversus abdominis now the game starts there is one more layer behind that's a peritoneum like layer peritoneum like layer not peritoneum and what is that that is fascia transversalis and this is what is very 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 important so do you know that fascia transversalis is forming the fourth layer and it has two layers so this is what is very 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 interesting thing that there are two layers of fascia transversalis so fascia transversalis is having the anterior layer and the posterior layer and after this it's peritoneum so you have to understand that the floor is a very composite structure 
but before understanding floor you have to have a complete idea about what is the anterior wall and what is the posterior wall so anterior wall is by external oblique and posterior wall is by transversus abdominis and fascia transversalis and this is what is very important now just see one thing anteriorly the external oblique is hanging like this and it will roll on itself to form a ligamentous structure which is known as inguinal ligament so this is nothing so the inguinal ligament is nothing but a condensation of what it is the external oblique aponeurosis try to understand the external oblique which was hanging like this has rolled on itself similarly the posterior wall which was formed by transversus abdominis and fascia transversalis they will also condense on it themselves to form a similar ligamentous structure and this is what is known as iliopubic tract so my today's lecture is based on the concept of iliopubic tract students if you don't understand iliopubic tract you don't understand anything about the laparoscopic anatomy so i will like to share one important piece that floor if you talk about the floor who is making the floor in majority of the cases the major component of the floor is by the inguinal ligament but the posterior most portion of the floor it is also made by iliopubic tract and if you don't understand this you will be always confused with the laparoscopic anatomy so tell me one important thing that what is forming the floor yes major section of the floor is formed by the inguinal ligament but the posterior component of the floor is formed by the iliopubic tract the next very important thing that you have to understand is iliopubic tract is forming the base of the deep ring and this is what what is again very important so what is a deep ring there is something which is known as superficial ring there is something which is known as deep ring now deep ring is a defect in the fascia transversalis superficial ring is actually on the external oblique side so superficial and deep ring and this transition between them is known as inguinal canal now if you talk about the contents we have to be very 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 judicial in this what is the content of the inguinal canal it is the uh, spermatic cord but if you try to understand who forms the spermatic cord answer is the gonadal vessels and the spermatic that is the vast difference in majority of the cases this is the major component so who enters the canal from the medial side answer is it is the vas which enters the canal from the medial side and this is how the things are this is how the things are so this is the vas who enters the canal from the lateral side answer is the gonadal vessels enter the canal from the lateral side and together they make what students spermatic cord so the gonadal vessels the gonadal vessels enter the canal they enter the canal from the lateral side and vas enters the canal from the medial side and if you have an idea to this you will always 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 understand each and everything remember students this diagram is very important if you don't understand this diagram you will never be able to understand anything what is the crux from this diagram when we talk about the orientation this is what is very 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 important what is that let us see the orientation orientation of hernia repair now because if you don't have orientation of hernia repair you will keep on struggling with what is the triangle of doom what is the triangle of pain what is the management of any hernia the management of any hernia is reduce the hernia and do something to prevent its recurrence and that is why we put meshes so try to understand i am showing you a box diagram so let me represent the inguinal canal by this box so this is inguinal canal as we all can cherish that this is looking uh, something like inguinal canal in form of a box so if i am talking about inguinal canal so this wall should be representing the posterior wall and thus this posterior wall is actually nothing but the fascia transversalis this is what is very 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 important the next thing is this is the anterior wall and if you talk about the anterior wall what is anterior wall this is the external oblique if we develop this orientation you will never get confused now the second box from where the content is coming the abdominal cavity so let us make the content cavity also so this is the abdominal cavity from which the content is protruding into the you can say inguinal canal so it's very important for us to understand that yes the content is coming from the abdominal cavity 
so this is abdominal cavity so i hope you can understand that who will be forming this wall of inguinal canal this is what is peritoneum so if you see we have seen peritoneum which is forming the lining of the abdominal cavity then we have the fascia transfer cells and then we enter into the inguinal canal so if i want to reduce the hernia and prevent its recurrence i will have to place the mesh so the next task is where do we place the mesh so mesh placement is big 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 headache so where is the mesh placed answer is sir it is placed in an avascular space the answer is very simple it is placed in avascular space so what is that space in the open hernia in the open hernia repairs we always enter the canal from the anterior side and the mesh is placed into the canal so if we talk about the mesh the mesh in this case will be placed inside the canal so in the open hernia repairs the mesh is placed inside the canal and this is a universal truth so mesh is placed it is placed inside the canal when we talk about inside the canal that means in between the anterior wall and posterior wall we place the mesh this is how the things are done but when we talk about laparoscopic repair we never enter the canal and that is what is the crux of understanding anything so if you talk about the laparoscopic repair where do we place the mesh the answer is the mesh is placed in the space between the peritoneum and the fascia transverse cellis and if you understand this you understand everything that in laparoscopic repair whatever repairs are we doing whatever anatomy we are manipulating we are manipulating in between the peritoneum and the fascia transfer cells and that is the place where you will find triangle of doom also triangle of pain also so mesh placement in case of laparoscopic repair laparoscopic repair is behind the canal and when you talk about behind the canal what do you understand that means in between in between peritoneum in between peritoneum and 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 the fascia transverse cellis do you know what is the name for this space this space is known as preperitoneal space of bogros so if i show you this space this is the space which is known as preperitoneal space of bogros and why is this space preferred because this is completely a vascular space so this is this space is known as a space of bogros now let us talk about the space of bogros and the important triangles so important triangles of laparoscopic repair so when you talking about important triangles why you tend to get confused because you tend to mug up the things remember surgery is an emotion and emotion can never be mugged up you have to feel it to cherish or enjoy it so try to understand that whatever repair we are doing in laparoscopic surgery in context with hernia we are doing it in the preperitoneal space where behind me so behind me is the peritoneum in front of me is the fascia transfer cells and i am sitting in what space of bogros you have to understand this now try to see there are two triangles triangle of doom and there is something which is known as triangle of pain so triangle of doom and triangle of pain what are the two important things that we need to understand in context with triangle of doom and triangle of pain forget everything just try to feel the things so i hope you can understand that this is a deep ring okay before that so this is fascia transfer cells and this is a defect in this fascia transfer cells which is known as deep ring i hope you know that base of the deep ring base of the deep ring is made by fish uh, made by iliopubic tract so it is the iliopubic tract which is making the base now who is entering the canal from the later medial side answer is vas is entering the canal from the lat medial side who is entering the canal from the lateral side answer is these are the spermatic vessels which enter the canal so try to understand the spermatic vessels or gonadal vessels enter from the lateral side and medially it is the vas now you all know that if in front is fascia transfer cells if in front is fascia transfer cells who will be behind the answer is very simple it will be peritoneum so peritoneum is forming the boundary which is the base of this triangle so can you understand why behind is peritoneum in front is fascia 
and there is a triangle here which is known as triangle of doom can you see and who is foundering the boundaries medially it is the vas laterally it is the spermatic vessels again you again have to understand this is iliopubic tract so there is iliopubic tract on one side then there is spermatic vessel on the or gonadal vessels on one side and again in front is fascia in front is fascia transfer cellus behind will be what students peritoneum so you can jolly well see two triangles here there is one triangle this is one triangle which is known as triangle of pain and there is one more triangle which is known as triangle of doom so triangle of doom triangle of pain these are two important triangles and together they form a trapezoid still those who couldn't understand one more way to understand it let us let us see let us see once again this is the d let us make this is the deep ring i will make a deep ring okay this is a deep ring i have made for you now who is who is forming the base of the deep ring who is forming the base of the deep ring it is iliopubic tract which which is forming the base now who is entering the deep ring from the medial side answer is it is the vas which is entering the deep ring from the medial side who is entering the deep ring from the lateral side answer is the gonadal vessels are entering the deep ring from the lateral side you know in front is fascia so in front is fascia who will be behind students answer is it is the peritoneum which is going to be behind so together this is triangle of doom where medially vas laterally gonadal vessels and this is going to be triangle of pain again this together is known as trapezoid of disaster together they are known as trapezoid of disaster so when we talk about the concept of trapezoid of disaster why it is known as a trapezoid of disaster answer is the manipulation in this space should be minimum or should not be done the medial part of this the medial part of this is known as triangle of doom now why it is known as triangle of doom it's very 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 important because the content of this triangle is very important to understand it is the external iliac vessel so it is the iliac vessels which is the content of this triangle and any manipulation done in this can damage it and if you damage iliac vessels in laparoscopic anatomy in laparoscopic surgery the biggest you can say trouble is controlling the hemostasis and this is iliac you'll have one minute within one minute the complete or if not one minute also 30 seconds the complete abdominal cavity is full of blood your camera is not showing you anything and the patient dies if the patient dies a triangle of doom for both the consultant as well as the you can say patient so iliac vessel then you have the genital branch genital branch of genitofemoral nerve and you also have plus minus the femoral nerve as a content of this the important thing is no dissection done in this triangle no dissection no dissection to be done here to be done here this is what is very 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 important the next if you talk about is laterally if you talk about laterally who is lateral present what is the structure which is lateral answer is triangle of pain so why it is known as triangle of pain try to understand the content of this triangle the most important control of content of this triangle is femoral nerve then we have lateral cutaneous femoral nerve lcfn then we also have the femoral branch femoral branch of of genitofemoral nerve now why this triangle is important now you have to understand that this is the iliopubic tract these are the gonadal vessels and I hope you can understand that this is vas. So as per the knowledge of this that we have discussed, this is triangle of doom, this is triangle of doom and this is the triangle of pain. Now let us let us see the more or the bigger window of this. So this is how the hernia looks like and when you are placing a mesh, so suppose you are, suppose I am putting a mesh. So let me create a mesh and put it for you. So this is a mesh that has been put in order to secure the mesh in its place in order to secure the mesh in its place we will have to put the tackers. So when you are putting the tackers you are putting the tackers or the sutures if you tend to go below the iliopubic tract you are going to suture the nerves and remember if the nerves are sutured or you push a pin on a you can say nerve what will happen you will have a constant sensation of pain. 
सो दिस इज वॉट इज वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट नो सूचर्स नो सूचर्स दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट नो सूचर्स और टैकर्स और टैकर्स should should be placed should be placed here why it should not be placed answer is answer is there is increased risk of nerve entrapment and students if there is nerve entrapment what will happen this will lead to something which is known as classically cpps what is cpps chronic pelvic pain syndrome and then the patient will keep on requesting to you Uh, sir please sir the pain is there the pain is there i am not able to understand why the pain is not going so even you are not doing because your eyes will not see anything which your brain doesn't know so laparoscopic hernia surgery is not a surgery for amateurs yes you should have a basic orientation of dissection so i will show you these